Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about um, Dungeon Craft's shocking revelation in his latest um, video. Uh, he just did a he did a video about one year he spent <laughs> one year without Dungeons and Dragons, which he totally spent with Dungeons and Dragons. It's, the title is a misnomer, uh, but it, it's absolutely fascinating. He did a brilliant, brilliant, um, just absolutely. Dungeon Craft is one of the top. When it comes to Dungeons and Dragons commentary, um, I think there's a tie between Nerd Immersion and Dungeon Craft. Those guys are crushing it. They're both. They both have better channels than me. Like, never watch one of my videos until you've watched all of theirs, right? Like, you know, like these guys. You know, I work hard on this channel, right? But not anything like the labors that are being spent by Nerd Immersion or Dungeon Craft. They have incredible quality in every video, and they always have something relevant to say, right? But Dungeon Craft just said something incredible and I want to break it down. So what we're going to talk about today is Dungeon Craft talking about when he thought he was going to die, he had to Dungeon Master. Let's get into this and what that means for you today as a Dungeon Master, what it means for every Dungeon Master today and every Dungeons & Dragons player today because it means a lot. Okay, so I have this, I have, I, I am the creator of the Unbound Identity Theory. I. It is my humble opinion that the um, the preeminent, prominent creator, the central creator in 1974 of Dungeons & Dragons, did not create a game. He secretly created a, um, he secretly created a human improvement engine, right? Now, I get a lot of flack for this on, on online, right? Because I'm the only person in the world who believes it, which I, I get, right? Like, get, guess what? When Darwin said evolution was real, there was a point where he was the only guy who believed it. Like, you know, like, I'm there. I'm in the darling slot, okay? I, I have this theory that I'm trying to sell people on, right? So, one of the things people say is, like, Scott, Scott the, why didn't the central, uh, prominent, preeminent, uh, central creator of uh, Dungeons & Dragons in 1974, why didn't he tell us uh, his secret? And I'm like, well, that's not how secrets work. If you want to know evidence of what I'm saying, that Dungeons & Dragons is not a game, and that it is actually a human improvement engine, right? You're not going to find that anywhere in the central creator of Dungeons and Dragons work. Nowhere. Right? Like, because he kept it secret. And I, I like, just, I'm going to send you to the dictionary, look up the definition of a secret, right? When you hold something secret, you never give clues to it that that's what you're doing, right? That's how you keep secrets, right? So where will you find the evidence that Dungeons and Dragons is not a game, but is actually a human improvement engine, right? And that the idea that Dungeons and Dragons is a game is laughable, right? Uh, well, you're going to find it today in the people who care about Dungeons and Dragons the most. And in my humble opinion, Dungeon Craft, Professor Dungeon Master over on Dungeon Craft, just presented evidence that Dungeons and Dragons has never been a game and has always been a human improvement engine. Right? Like, so let's get into it. Okay? So watch Dungeon Ma Professor Dungeon Master's video. It's in the link below. Okay? Um, now, now let's talk about what he said. He said... Hey, when I was in junior high, and here's what happened, right? I was failing my classes because I was playing Dungeons and & Dragons and dungeon mastering Dungeons & Dragons nonstop. I was dungeon mastering Dungeons & Dragons nonstop. I couldn't get enough of it, right? And my parents came and they said, we're taking your Dungeons & Dragons books, right? He's specifically failing algebra, right? And he was failing. And he had to go to a failing night, right? He shamed his parents, shamed himself. And guess, get this. Professor Dungeon Master ain't a dumb guy. This is like, he's super intelligent. He's exactly what I tell you every Dungeon Master is today. He's confident, he's charismatic, and he's intelligent, right? Like, every de every decent Dungeon Master on the planet is those three things, right? Like, uh, they they're prerequisites to be a Dungeon Master. It's just the way it is, right? And if you don't have those things, you stop being a Dungeon Master because it sucks and nobody wants you to Dungeon Master for that. But if you have those three things, you remain a Dungeon Master, right? And, of course, Professor Dungeon Master is a Dungeon Master of this day, right? So he said, when I was junior high, right, I was choosing to play Dungeons & Dragons to the point where I was failing. I was failing in my education, right? Not because he was stupid, but because he was not. He's like, I'm giving this time and attention to Dungeons & Dragons. His parents came and they said, that's it. We're taking your Dungeons & Dragons book, right? And he said, this, may, this gave him a time of reflection, right? And he really looked at his life. And you know what he thought? He said... Not only was I going through my formative years in, in junior high, but at the time, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. He said at the time, uh, we, were, we were all worried about dying from a nuclear attack. 
It's like, and just so you're aware, he was afraid about dying from a nuclear attack because America was in a cold war with Russia, right? We were in a cold war with Russia, right? And every single day in the, in the you know, late 70s or the early 80s, wherever this was happening for him, right? Um, every American woke up and was like, uh, is Russia going to allow me to live today? Oh my goodness, look at that. Can, can we empathize, right? And he had, he had had to watch a movie that showed him as a junior high kid, you are quite likely to die soon from a nuclear blast. They told all the kids that, right? And they're like, and here's how to hide from a nuclear blast, but just remember, you may die soon, right? So so Professor Dungeon Master had to, had to reconcile his life. He's like, every day of my life is a gift from Russia. Guess what? Do you have empathy for Professor Dungeon Master? Because guess what? Every day of your life today is a gift from Vladimir Putin that he did not decide today to do what he threatened five, six months ago. He's like, oh, if anybody gets, you know, I'm bullying Ukraine over here. If any of you, if the U.S. gets involved in this, I'll nuke all of you. He said it just like we, he said the quiet part aloud, right? Every day of your life is a gift from Vladimir Putin, right? Like, so can you empathize with the terror that Professor Dungeon Master felt in the 70s and 80s and realized that we're under the same threat right now and absolutely nothing has changed between like 1978 and 2022? Well, that's shocking, right? Like, all right, so so Professor Dungeon Master, he sees this movie and they said, hey, you're a junior high kid. We want you to know you could die tomorrow, right? So he has to, he has to make a decision. He's like, okay, here's my decision. I have fellow students, right? Those And my friends come from that fellow student base, right? I have parents who are instructing me to do this. And um, I also have, uh, you know, I have family who want me to engage with my education. And I have fellow students who want me to engage with my education. And I have teachers who care about what's happening. And they're saying, hey, engage with your education, right? Do, do what you need to do to have a good and bright future, right? You know what Professor Dungeon Master said in his junior years? He's like, they can all, my family can go kick rocks. My fellow students can go kick rocks. These incredibly dedicated, because um, it said he did, he went to a private school, right? These incredibly dedicated, caring teachers, they can all go kick rocks. I am dedicating my life to Dungeons and Dragons. If I'm going to die, I will not care about this IRL world. I will care about the fantasy world that was created by the central creator of Dungeons and Dragons in 1974. This is what life should be spent on. Now, you think shoots and ladders? Has anybody saying, oh my gosh, I could die tomorrow. I better dedicate myself to shoots and ladders. No, because it's a game, right? But he understood, in my opinion, Professor Dungeon Master subconsciously understood this is not a game. This is something that will improve my life. And I will be darned far more than education, far more than the IRL pursuits. The real is in the fantasy. And I will dedicate it myself. If I'm going to die, I will dedicate myself to it. And he literally failed through the entire year and had to go to summer school. And you know what he said? Watch his video. By dedicating myself to Dungeons and Dragons, my life improved. Education did not deliver a useful outcome for me. My dedication to Dungeons and Dragons did. Because if it hadn't been for Dungeons and Dragons, he would have never went to summer school, which improved his life. Dungeons and Dragons is, in my humble opinion, not a game. It is a human improvement engine. You encounter new evidence every single day to this hard, hard truth which I think is a hard truth in my own opinion. The question is if you have the wisdom to recognize it. That's the question. Oh, that's my opinion. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider like subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.